is the first sign that you are a alcoholic? What is the first, one of the first signs? I'll be honest. The alcohol puts you in the place of uh, feel good. I'm all right. Just me and my bottle. Alcohol itself, it kind of, uh, well, actually it does. It stems from what we are taught. It becomes a cancer and it spreads. And you know what happens? You pick up those same habits. For me, it was low self-esteem. And um, I took that and used uh, so, so many different vices to try to compensate. I always thought it was something, something wrong with me. We are taught that the weed is good. We are taught that uh, cigarettes is okay. Wow, I didn't realize how hard this is to do, to talk about yourself. Doing that crack addiction is when I... You know, I was homeless. We all deal with lust in the world. We all deal with things. Um, For as long as I can remember, I've been battling with the demon of lust. Now, I know a lot of single brothers go through this thing. A lot of single brothers struggle with lust, fornication, adultery. Well, what about the brothers who are not single? What about the brothers who are married? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. So the first thing, one of the first things you got to do other than not meddling with it is acknowledge your sin. A lot of times we don't want to acknowledge it. What's wrong with us? And that's the importance of when you come, when you're on your own, you know what? It is hard for many of our, our people to identify their problem. You know, it changes your behavior. Changed mine. Be I, had to, I had to admit to myself I had a problem. I didn't want to face that demon, you know? I battle lust within. How you brothers doing this Sabbath? Sisters, how are y'all doing? Today is Catch Hell Day, so everybody get ready. Everybody get ready, everybody get ready. Never be ashamed of who you are. Somebody put something on, uh, what's that called? One of those things said, never be ashamed of who you are unless you're a house nigga or Uncle Tom or a coon. That's the only time to be ashamed of who you are. We're going to look at a couple of videos today, but today's class we're going to deal with battling the lust within. We talk about it, we're going to be about it, we're going to see steps on how to overcome. A lot of, especially you porno brothers, you porno nasty brothers. We're going to get on y'all. We're going to get on y'all. Don't, don't think we're going to forget the sisters. Sisters, y'all in this too. <laughs> all right. Well, all righty then. There's been an uproar this week about Bill Cosby. Now, like I always say, we're going to stand on the most high side. However, I, I find it personally strange that the old Edomite woman that looked like hell herself comes out of the woodwork 
bringing these allegations and there have never been any charges pressed against them. Then Raven, what's her name, Raven? Raven Simone, the resident lesbian. Now I know why she complained about them because I, I just find it odd, I find it odd. Not that I don't believe she, Bill Cosby touched her because what was the other daughter on the show with him? Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet had called Cosby this was years ago about the new upcoming movie she was doing. What was that movie with Angel Heart? Angel Heart, right? And Bill Cosby said, "Do not do the sex scene with uh, Mickey Rock. It's going to ruin your career." He said, "You should do no sex scenes at all." She didn't listen. She did the sex scene, and her career went down the, down the tubes. So I find it odd that a man like that would turn around and touch Raven Simone. I don't believe it. But I do know he reprimanded her about her lifestyle. And y'all know when you get on lesbians and homosexual about their lifestyle, they get an evil eye towards you. That's how I see this. And what are you going to say, Barack? Okay. Um, actually, Raven Simone got on um, the internet and she, because she mailed it on her Instagram, uh-huh. denying that. Cosby touched her. Oh, good. And then she said she don't want to be put be part of any of those rumors that people are putting out. Okay, good. All praise. I'm glad you corrected that thing. I heard the contrary, but I'm glad you corrected that. All praises. I find it very odd. And I know they just, they are. Now, another thing. Bill Cosby, I'm not saying he's righteous at all, because I know he don't keep the commandments, but he's one of the last black entertainers that, right, has a conscience to tell black men, pull your pants up, learn to read. Do better for your family. He's one of the last black ones that say that now there's a campaign to destroy that man. That's how I look at it. But I don't, I'm not taking side. I'll stay on the Lord's side because there is a part that says, well, maybe he is the devil secretly. Maybe he is. You never know. Jello pudding. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Reverend Simone speaks out against rumors that killed Bill Cosby assault. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my apologies, Raven Simone, for uh, putting that out there. Um, what else the other thing we got in the news and else in the news? Oh, your, your, your president, president, what's his name? Obama. Obama. Yeah. President Obama went on the news to talk about the immigration uh, solution and three of the major networks refused to air the president's speech. Now, I heard a speech, I had, to, I had to go online and he talked about, he said he's not talking about illegal immigrants who are felons, criminals. He said he's not addressing them. He's talking about those who are in the country working, who have had children in this country who are five and up at this current time. He said he's not addressing new immigrants, but those who have been here for quite some time. I didn't see anything wrong with the speech. John Baynard, the, the House Speaker, is that what he's termed? That dude. As soon as I see him, I see Satan. I don't know about y'all. I don't know what y'all see. But I, his eyes look like those animal eyes. Y'all see them animals with those eyes? That dude. I'm like, oh, God. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, anyway, well, you know, when I, when I watched a little bit of it, I laughed. I chuckled. Uh, because that benefits us as a people. The devil is against himself. Because don't be... Don't be surprised that you know Obama is a devil. <laughs> He's a devil, and all of them are devil. I love to see the devil fight each other. They're falling apart in the midst of us right now. Let them argue and figure it out. We're going to keep these commandments. Bishop. Yes. And um, now they're suing him. They, yeah, said, they, suing said, the they said he went uh, uh, above his powers, which, which is inaccurate. So they're spreading that through the media so that ignorant blacks and Latinos who don't know what he's talking about because you even got some Latinos that are against what he did with that. Crazy. They are brainwashed, totally. This media has destroyed the minds of our people. All right. Let's open up with Hebrews. No, there was an article. Next article. I'm sorry. You got to keep me on. Black students walk out over school officials tweet. Every white girl's father's worst nightmare. Can you zoom in on that picture? Zoom in on that photo. I want y'all to see this. This is every white girl's father's nightmare, worst nightmare. Look at all these white girls with black and Latino boy, uh, uh, what do they call them when they take to the, di- the di- prom dates? So because that was tweeted, now look, every white girl got a so-called black or Latino, um, what is it, prom date. 
because the white woman put that online, all the black kids got mad and walked out. See, I'm, black people, y'all are just so damn simple as hell. The white woman put the truth out. You get mad and walk out to school. It was simple as hell. Photo of mixed race couples was included with a school official's offensive tweet. A school official's offensive tweet. Can you go down? Let me look at that thing. Update. School officials respond to racist tweet uproar. Both my daughters had black parents. <laughs> Students at Booker T. Washington High School in Norfolk, Virginia walked out of class on Monday to protest a school official's Twitter message that referred to young black men as a nightmare for white fathers. But they are, Blanche. But they are. Hmm. Yeah, Booker T. Washington was the black man. Now, this is very funny. Can we get the scripture, please? Give me that, and um, what do I want? The book of Joshua, chapter 23, verse 12. Thank you. Else, if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and, shall make marriages with them, and and go in unto them. And they to you. And they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. The Lord thy God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But what will they be? Go ahead. But they shall be snares and traps unto you. If you make marriages, join with these other nations, these nations shall be snares and traps unto you. Go ahead. And scourges in your sides. Scourges in your sides. And thorns in your eyes. And thorns in your eyes. Until ye perish from off this good land Lord your God have given you. So we lost the kingdom because we broke that law. We wanted to make marriages with these other nations. So when a white woman tell you, we don't want to be with you. You are a white girl's father's worst nightmare. You get mad and walk out to school. But God said that too. That's why these Christians, they don't, the Christians are the worst of all religions because they have the Bible in their hand and won't obey nothing in it. Give me the next one in Corinthians. Uh, don't be unequally yoked, that one. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Bilal? So the Most High doesn't want us dealing with these unbelievers. It includes the other nations as well. Understand that. These unbelievers includes the other nations as well. Give me Revelation 18.4. The sin of miscegenation. Is that the proper word? Miscegenation? Unlawful cohabitation of races together? Here's the answer to that. Revelation 18 verse 4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out of her my people That you be not partakers of our sins So when it says come out of her Meaning don't partake in the doctrines here in America So the dumb negro gets angry Because the truth comes out That they don't. you are the white girl's father's worst nightmare You want to walk out to school now Because you mad because of democracy and Christianity Christianity. Democracy and Christianity is the same garbage. It's the same garbage. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, whatever, whatever feels good, do it. That's a, a Epicurean doctrine that you read about in Acts. If it feels good, just do it. So that's what democracy is. That's what Christianity is. It has nothing to do with the Most High God. Give me that in Tobit. Tobit 4. Black kids walking out of school because a white woman tweeted, white people don't want to be with you. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Beware of all whoredom, my son. Beware of all whoredom. Key word in that verse, whoredom. What is whoredom? He's going to give an example of what whoredom is as we read on. Go ahead. And chiefly, take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. So if you don't take a wife of the seed of your fathers, it's called whoredom. It falls under whoredom. I want all you men and women to understand that. It falls under whoredom, which falls under fornication, which falls under thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou, the law that says thou shalt not commit adultery is the law of marriage. 
all the uh, things that go contrary to that fall under that law, thou shalt not commit adultery. Like you hear people say, um, there's over 600 laws in the Bible. That's when you understand statutes and substatutes and uh, give me some other words, uh, bylaws, um, things of that nature. So under thou shalt not commit adultery, you think, oh, that's just saying I shouldn't sleep with my neighbor's wife. No, it's more than that. Homosexuality falls under that too because why? That breaks the law of marriage. Um, dealing with other nations falls under thou shalt not commit adultery because that breaks the law of marriage. Understand that. Okay. Where you at, Leo? Verse 12. Uh-huh. And take not a strange woman to wife. The Bible says don't take a strange woman to wife, meaning a woman of another nation. Don't do that. Go ahead. Which of thy father's tribe. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Go ahead. For we are the children of the prophets. For we are the children of the prophets. Noah. Noah. Hey. Now this, somebody might ask, well, you can't marry outside of your tribe. Yeah, you can. There are many examples of it. The reason that he says that, because there was an example in Deuteronomy where marrying inside your tribe dealt with inheritance. For example, suppose this table here is the land of Ephraim. This is the land of Ephraim. Ephraim, let's say Ephraim has no, no sons. So Ephraim's daughters marries Judah, Benjamin, Gad, and Simeon. Guess who gets that land then? Those tribes that I just named. What, would this be any longer Ephraim's land? No, it would be the inheritance of the men. So that's why I said when in terms of that, you can read that on your own in Deuteronomy, there was an issue with that where a man had seven daughters. And, they, and he said, if my daughters... I have no sons. He said, if my daughters marry the men of the other tribes, I have no more inheritance of land. So the most I told Moses, um, what did he tell him? She had, to marry she had to marry within that tribe. Those seven had to marry within the tribe. Thank you. So that's why what we're reading here. Read that again, Osaleon. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah. Now was Noah of any tribe? No. Go ahead. Abraham. Was Abraham of a tribe? No. Go ahead. Isaac? Was Isaac of a tribe? No. Go ahead. And Jacob? Was Jacob of a tribe? No. But they were all the chosen seed of God. Read. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even, they, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. So the point is marry wives of your own kindred. The word kindred there means people, meaning your race, your nation. Go ahead. And were blessed in their children. Go ahead. And their seed shall inherit the land. Uh huh. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren. See that part where it says, therefore, my son, love thy brethren. If you don't marry your nation, that shows, read that again. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren. If you don't marry within your nation, you don't love your people. Go ahead. And just not that's the proof and despise not in thy heart in thy heart thy brethren thy brethren so the Bible showing us that when we go outside of our race okay we show hatred towards our people now somebody right now in them little mind Negro mind is saying what about Moses Moses fled from his people for how many years was he gone from Israel 40 years and he had married a wife Side of Israel, why? Because Israel was in captivity. Moses fled. Y'all don't remember the history? So Moses got a wife outside of Israel while he was away from Israel, and the Most High allowed that to go down. Another one. You had Joseph. That was before, I don't want to joke, that was before there were tribes. Let me go ahead while there was tribes. Esther. Esther was in slavery, and the Persian king married her. What's she going to say? Hell no. <laughs> And the Lord used Esther to deliver Israel. So unless you fall in either of them two scenarios, which none of us do, none of us do, don't bring them up. What about Moses? You ain't Moses. And you sisters ain't Esther either. <laughs> the hell is this? Um, yeah. Can you read it for us? I'm going to say something real quick. In the, in the examples that the bishop just gave you concerning Moses and Esther, I'm going to read something to you real quick. This is Isaiah 55. I read it myself, uh, verse 8. Because, uh, like you say, now, the, um, a nigger will have a simple mind and try to justify. The law says, what does the law of God say? That we're not to marry them, right? So I'm going to read some real quick. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither is your ways my way, saith the Lord. 
For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's what happened with man. Man tried to have a philosophical thought. Of, the Lord is not asking none of us to figure anything out. He already has the blueprint. There's a purpose on why he had Esther married that heathen king, and that's his business. That's not our, our job is to follow the commandments of God. Because I've heard people use that before. What about Moses? What about Moses? What did Moses tell us to do? Keep the commandments. Exactly. Hope y'all understand that. All right. All righty then. Um, next thing in the news there was uh, Rick Ross, the original Rick Ross, who the rapper Rick Ross stole his name from. Pull an article up. Uh, Rick Ross, the ex-drug kingpin, says CIA behind hip-hop's love affair with drugs. Now, we're going to get in more depth on this another time, but uh, when you read what he's... Go down, let me... It says, under the interim government of Hamid Kazai, opium poppy cultivation once again began to skyrocket and opium markets were restored. Kurt Nimmo wrote via... Infowars.com. Now, when you read this whole thing, you could tell an ex -drug, a drug dealer don't talk like this. I'm glad to have Infowars.com because Infowars.com, what's that Edomite's name? That fat e Alex Jones is behind this whole thing to try to recruit dumb blacks and Latinos into a militia that he is a part of, which is under the Tea Party, under the Republicans. It all goes hand in hand, so he's using this guy, Rick Ross, as his new spokesman, and it's garbage. So we'll get into that maybe next week or a week later. Give me Hebrews 13, 17. We'll get into the class now. We're going to talk about battling lust with that. I'm going to open up with a video. I know some of y'all say, well, I don't understand why we're looking at this. There's a reason why we're looking at this. I know a lot of you brothers don't know about war. You used to fist fighting. 
eh, the woman. That ain't war. Um, get Ephesians 6.16. What I want y'all to see is that in this life, we are at spiritual war. We read many times before that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, the war begins within us. The war begins within every man and woman. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The fiery, the word dart there is arrow. I know some of y'all, y'all, y'all don't know about war. You read dart and, and can you put a dart on the screen? This is what a Negro and Latino thinks. Show them a picture of a dart. Nobody goes to war with this. Nobody goes to war with this. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with a dart. The word dart there goes, translates to either arrow or javelin. And that's what we saw in war. That's why when you read this, these scriptures, you really gotta envision, put yourself there. So that first arrow, like the brother said, that was a signal, right? That in which it was to the rest of the army. Get ready to attack. Now the first thing that lights up within us in our lives Let's say you are a, what is the first sign that you are a alcoholic? What is the first, one of the first signs? Aquila, help us. What's one of the first signs? First signs would probably be the um, drink too much, uh, out of control. Now, diff thank you. Uh, Jonah, let me hear what you got. Seven times out of ten, you can smell it on their breath. Seven times out of ten, you can smell it. You can smell a drunk. Okay, let me hear this young man. It becomes a need. It becomes a what? A need. A lead? A need. A necessity. Oh, a need. N-E-E-D. A need. Let me hear this brother right here. When you wake up to drink, you're an alcoholic. Okay. <laughs> One of the signs, you wake up 6 a.m. and you got to have a drink. Remember this brother? I forgot. Is that an old man? He used to get up and drink a Heineken at 5 a.m. in the morning. But that's signs of alcohol. Like uh, Quilla said, you out, out of control. Some alcoholics, you got different kinds of alcoholics. You got the out of control alcoholic. You got the weeping alcoholic. You ever see a weeping alcoholic? They get drunk and they just start crying over everything. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You are a drunk. Or you get the violent drunk. They want to fight everybody. That party drunk too. What about, let's say alcohol's not your problem. Let's say your problem is... Pornography. What is one of the signs that you are addicted to porn? Or watch porn in general. Let's say, when is the sign that you have a problem? The sign of somebody that's addicted to porn is somebody who keeps watching it over and for long periods of time. Okay. And they go from either the computer to watching it on their phone to magazines to... Now, should we be looking at porn at all? No. No. Well, now, you can drink. You can drink alcohol. That's not unlawful. Porn is unlawful. So I just want you to know the difference. Alcohol is lawful unless, unless you're drunk. Porn is unlawful. It deals with fornication. Uh, what about marijuana? Is that lawful? No, it's not, because you're always high. You, it, it, it inebriates your thoughts. You are high. You are, what's the word? You are mentally out of your mind. You are out of your mind. What? You're not sober, thank you. You are not sober. Oh, I had a question. Now, there's different kinds of porn we went over before. Name some different types of porn. Give me some different kinds of porn that's out there. There's bestiality. Oh, bestiality! Incest. Okay. Incest. Um, there's old men with young women. There's, there's <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Old men with young there's, uh, women. Homosexuality. What do they call that? Dilf? I don't know. That's nasty. Dilf, milf, all kinds of stuff. Go ahead. Um. You got homosexuality. homosexuality. What's the other one? What's the one when they beat you? Oh, uh, the whips. Dominatrix. Uh, sadomasochist, yeah. dominatrix. That's that rape porn. Yeah, hentai. Yeah. You didn't raise your hand? Hentai porn. The Japanese, you like them little Japanese girls that look like boys. Thank you, brother. All kinds of filth out there. There's a problem. Now. Get First Peter's 
This, now, y'all asking, what does that got to do with the video we just saw? Everything has everything to do with the video we just saw. Give me that First Peter 2.11. Listen to the wording real good. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. Fleshly lusts, which, which includes pornography, weed smoking, drug addiction, some of you crackheads, um, what else? Alcoholism. One lust is being a, a lazy, a lazy sloth. Sloth is a sloth, S-L-O-T-H. Violence, yes, go ahead, come on. Abstain from fleshly lust. So the Bible says abstain from fleshly lust, go ahead. Which war? Which what? Which war? Which what? Which war against the soul? These fleshly lusts, brothers and sisters, war against your soul. Wars against your soul. That's what I want all of y'all to understand. These fleshly lusts war against our soul. But where do these fleshly lusts come from? Give me James. You think Satan pulls these lusts out of a, out of a hat and goes, oh, I'm going to plague you with weed. And I'm going to plague this brother with uh, rape thought. You know, and that thing on rape. Deacon Abiel says that rape is the ugly man's doctrine. Because he has such low self-esteem, he believes he can never get a woman. So the only way he can get a woman is bust upside the head, stomp her down, and have sex with her. That's the ugly man's doctrine. Low self-esteem. Low self I can never get a woman, so I must beat her up just to get her. You're sick. Oh, that's no Benjamin. That was Ephraim. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? What did I say go? James 1 and 12. Thank you. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that, see that key word there, right? Underline that word, endureth temptation. Go ahead. For when he is tried, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. You shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Mm -hmm. Read on. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. I have heard brothers say, God is tempting me. God put this lust within me. One brother said, Why do I have the addiction to porn? I wish I didn't have it. So I said to the brother, I said, So you don't want the porn? You want the crack addiction? Hmm. I said, at least with the, 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 the porn addiction, you got the liberty of getting your finger and hitting the off button. I said, a crackhead ain't got that, that uh, option. The crackhead is lighting it up and smoking the thing, and he's, he or she is messed up mentally and spiritually. So you want that? He goes, oh, no, not that you put it that way. I don't want that one. I want something else. Read that, read on. <laughs> <laughs> Let yeah. no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. I am tempted of God. God put this in this lust within me. God did it to me. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil, mm -hmm. neither tempteth he any man. So it's not God that these lusts come from, read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Now work above the special victims you know, I always go down and visit them. And they always say when you meet brothers or men, they don't say brother, I'm using the word, that got the, that rape spirit. It's either they are, it all goes back to low self-esteem, but they are, how can I say this nicely? They are physically incapable of performing. It might be to an accident they had in youth, it might be because they're extremely short. Is that short enough? That's short. You might be a short brother, so you feel a woman's gonna laugh at you, so you wanna bust upside the head to have sex with her, because you know she's gonna laugh at you if she, and, they, and he says, when we have sex, keep the lights off. Don't cut the lights on, why? I wanna see what you're working with. I don't want you to see. <laughs> so he gonna bust upside the head to have sex with her. That, 
mentality. And the Bible says, what kind of mindset is the mind of a rapist? What kind of mind mentality is that? It tells you in Deuteronomy. Uh, Jaleo, let's see. It calls that mindset murder. 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 You are dealing with a murderous spirit. When you're dealing with the lust of rape, you're dealing with a murderous spirit on you. I hope you brothers understand that. Where you at, Liam? Officer Liam? James chapter 1, verse 14. Uh huh. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And what? And enticed. So it's your own lust, and then you get enticed by it. So, for example, I'm going to give you an example of how it works. I'll start with the alcoholic. The alcoholic takes, you don't wake up and become an alcoholic. You're sitting around with the guys or the girls, and you start to sip. And you know how friends do, hey, try this. Take a little sip of this. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Just taste this. And all of a sudden, you start to like, it might be Grey Goose. It might, it might be Henny. Ciroc. Ciroc, whatever it is. You, this one floats your boat, and you start to sit there. And when you, sign of alcoholic, they get a coffee cup with alcohol, and you think they're drinking coffee. That's a sign you got a problem. What you drinking? Oh, this is coffee. How come I don't see no steam coming out of it? Ain't no smoke. It's cold coffee, so I like it. That's a drunk, iced coffee. That's a sign. Oh, a porn, same thing. You want, see how Deacon y'all up on his computer? Just playing around, ding, 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 ding. Then you get those, what they call pop-ups. Bing, and you see a pair of size 34 Ds there. And you go, hmm, and you start to look at that. Betty says, you want to be my friend? Yes, I want to be your friend. Then they got, what's some things called? The chat, where you have conversation. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the chat rooms. Y'all know them chat rooms. You have those chat rooms. I said, smell them. Yeah, go ahead. In, ho in, in households, and you know what? I know many of you are laughing, making light of it, but there's certain signs that you identify with. You know when you're looking at something wrong is when you're looking and you're turning back looking. When you turn the computer away to the, to the wall so the rest of the room can't see it. When somebody comes in the room and your hand goes to the mouse real quick, you're quick. What you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> like, like you close out an IUIC class. You're yeah, right. When you have those certain signs when you are quick to hit that mouse, you know you're doing something wrong. You have to identify those spirits in yourself before it manifests and destroys you. And that's when, what we saw in the video, remember the guy shot that, sh that first arrow? That's a, that was a signal, there's a problem. Prepare yourself for battle. So the signal with us in this life is these, there's telltale signs, telltale signs that we are, that there's a lust problem. So on the pawn, you start fishing around, you dibbling and dabbling, and before you know it, you, with, with porn, I always tell you, you become, the word is desensitized to regular porn. You know what I mean by that? Nobody, who don't know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Okay, they attack. Nobody know what I'm talking about. Can we look up desensitized? Desensitized. Now, what generally comes hand in hand, in hand with <laughs> pornography? I'm sorry. What usually joins with pornography? What? Masturbation. Now, regular porn, you start to look at, which is man and woman having sex, and you become, I use the word desensitize, which means make less sensitive, meaning you can't get off after a while of you looking at it, that regular porn don't excite you no more. You can't get off to it. Y'all know what I'm talking about now? So what do you start to do? You start to... Give me that scripture. Give me the scripture. Uh, 2 Ezra 16, 7, 67. 2 Ezra 16, 67. 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and, for, and forget your iniquity. To meddle no more with them. When it says meddle, meddle no more with them. What are you doing? You meddle with sin. What are you doing? Huh? I need to know that you men understand. When you meddle, meddle, Archangel. 
Let's use alcohol. How do you meddle? If you're an alcoholic, how do you meddle with alcoholism? What's all okay? You had his hand up. Entertaining. You entertain. What does that mean? Um, you're getting enticed by you entertaining that sin. Uh, you start to you know dabble with it. Oh, you start to. I like that word. You start to dabble with it. So how was how would an alcoholic meddle with his or her sin? How? When you say entertain it, what do you mean? And you said dabble. What does that mean? Make it plain. Um, be around. Be around where that stuff is at. Okay, so being around the bar. You might be around people that like to drink, right? What about the crackhead? How would the crackhead dabble in his or her crack addiction? Be around other people that what about do being it? around other people that like to deal with crack? Hmm? What about the porn addictor? The porn addictor. <laughs> the pornographer. Is that a word? Porn addict. Thank you. Porn addict. Porn addict. What does he, he start to do? Now, there might be a few women that can relate to that, but I know it's mostly brothers. Nobody knows how porn, porn addicts uh, meddle with their sin? You start to experiment. You start to experiment. You meddle, you experiment. So thank you. You start, regular porn don't do it for you, so you say, I don't like that. It's too boring. It begets, it gets boring. Missionary position, doggy style permission, it gets boring. So then you see, oh, this woman got punched all upside the head. Whoa! Blood! Oh man! Whoa! Have me that lotion. <laughs> now you're excited over the rape stuff. The saddle, what's the word? Saddle? Sado? What is it? Sado mask. That's the one when they be whipping each other and stuff. Now I'm gonna I always tell y'all, there is doorways. Show me a room full of doors. Show me a room full of doors. Just put it up on the screen. Okay. Okay, I like that, I like that. Y'all see all those doors right there, see all them doors? That's your mind. I want y'all to visualize, this is your mind. Each door, I'm dealing with you porn addicts first. Each door leads to something else. So you walk down the hallway. That first door on the left is your regular porn. You stay in there maybe a year and you get desensitized. You get bored with it. You take your Vaseline, your lotion, your whatever you take. Then you go to the next door. That might be your rapist door, and you get excited with that. You rapist, you're going to jail soon. I'm letting you know that now. Uh, after that, it might be pedophilia. You're like children. Because why? Now you're desensitized to uh, regular sex. You get desensitized to the rape, then it goes to dealing with children. This is the steps it takes. This is how it grows. After the year that, if you don't go to jail, you might make it out of that. Then you go to, what do they call that other thing? Bestiality, you like animals. Each door leads to a certain another sin. I want you to understand that. And if you like young girls, there are sites where the FBI will monitor you. If it says, hey, do you want to see a, a young girl get whatever? And you click it, and you see the girl's 10 years old. The FBI writes your name and address down. And one day, you're going to hit a knock at the door. And you get arrested, if, especially if there's children in your house. Don't play with that. Another door might be what they call scat. That's bowel movement, okay? Um, cartoons. Don't ask me how I know this stuff, but uh, <laughs> uh, it goes on and on. It, it starts to mess you up spiritually. You're going to get messed up. I'm going to tell you, Ben, up. You're going to get messed up. You will never get a wife. You know why? Because you'll be mad with her. After you have the first once or twice sex with her, it, you, you get, what's the word I used earlier? Desensitized. I told you that before. She can't put her leg behind her head the way that woman did in the video. This is, this is, these are regular women. The women you see on the screen, they go, they get paid, go to the gym, exercise, put your leg back here, do this, somersault of chandeliers. Regular woman can't do that. Now you mad with her because she can't perform the way you saw it in the, you cut me off y'all, what's up? <laughs> in the video, you mad, you angry, go ahead. They're professional whores. Like you got professional basketball players, they practice, they're professional whores. That's what they do. So you want to translate that at home. But I want to tell you something, back to what the elder was saying, their doorways. Let's, I want to read some real quick. Go to the book of Romans, where we was at. Romans, the uh, 13th chapter, uh, verse, I can't see, 13. 13, 13, yeah, Romans 13, 13. The book of Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Read on. 
but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's the same thing with the elders going over in Ephesians about putting on the whole armor, going back to, so you can, uh, some of the fiery darts, fiery darts. So it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. What it's telling you is apply all the commandments. That's what the Bible's telling you. Read on. And make not provision for the flesh. You know what it makes provision for the flesh? We'll get into that in a second. Read on. To fulfill the lust thereof. So my question is, what does it mean to make provisions for the flesh? What is provisions first? Somebody explain the word provisions. Show a hand. Who knows what it means? Brother, you stand up in the white shirt. What's your name? Shiloh. Shiloh. Please, give him a mic. What does the word provision mean? To get things ready. Okay, to get things ready. Look up the definition of provisions. It okay. says, and make not provisions for the flesh. It says, the action of providing or supplying use for something. Okay, so it says, don't make supplying the use of something. So in other words, what it's telling you, that you've got a little hot pocket of sin still lying dormant in you that you've never read. So now, the desensitizing begins with what? How do you get from the point of you reading the Bible and now you're enthralled for three hours on a porn site? How do you get there? It begins with uh, a Beyonce video. Then it goes to a twerk video. Huh? Then what? Then it goes to Nicki Minaj. And before you know it, you find yourself, you got 14 windows open. you between Firefox and Internet Explorer. <laughs> Chrome, Google, you become, you become a, a computer engineer overnight, clicking here, clicking there. How did you get there? You have not dead that spirit in you. And, it's, and what the elders are trying to tell you, based on the scripture, it's going to destroy you. And it manifests in your speech. Many times you listen to people. I listen long enough, they'll tell you who the hell they are. They'll talk because it manifests in your behavior. So let's read that last verse again. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So when you make provisions in your flesh for whatever your lust is, hatred, whatever, you have a part of you that's deep down inside you that you've never rid yourself of. And every so often, that spirit just bubbles back up because there's going to be key things that's going to trigger you and it'll begin. And it'll start with watching a, uh, a regular music video. But it's little things in that music video that moves you. I'm going to tell you something. I saw, uh, what's that, what's on? Beyonce video, uh, the, the water board or whatever you call it. And as soon as I saw it, I turned that clack. I said, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I, don't, I ain't no Beyonce fan. I said, oh, that ain't good for my spirit. No, 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 no. You got to identify those things in you or you will get caught up. Exactly. I hope you all understand it. And like uh, Bishop Kanai said, you start to identify it through. It'll come out in your, in your speech. You be looking at something. What was that movie where I, I think it was a comedy and the guy said, y'all y'all gonna know the movie. It might be Don't Drink Your Juice. What's that movie? Oh, yeah, man, In South Central. It's old. Remember there's a, I don't know what movie it is, but it's the one where the dude says about the suds down a man's back. Yeah, don't be a menace in South, and all the brothers, they laugh and talk. He makes a joke like, you ever see suds run down the, um, the, the man's back, run down the cock of his ass? And all of them, you hear the music like, Rah! and everybody looking at him. Word of a jail? Shit, man, I, I, man, I don't give a damn about going to jail. You can take me to jail. Take, take me, me to jail. jail. Shit, lock me up. Lock, lock me up. up. <laughs> Throw away the key. Throw away, away the key. key. I ain't afraid of <laughs> his ass. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. This fool is tripping. I'm out of here. You on your own there, bro. Y'all, y'all, come on, man. Y'all ain't never been in a shower with a man in a. You see the suds? Roll down the crack of his ass, and you just be a turkey. I'm fooling y'all, man. I was fooling y'all. Those was jokes. But it came out of his speech, and he was like, "Oh, uh, I didn't mean that. I, I, I didn't mean that." It's the same thing with bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing. You brothers watching porn, it's gonna come out in your speaker, you're gonna say some uh, vile stuff. Be looking at a, re a video, I punch a bee in the face, and I punch in the face. What the hell are you talking about? We're looking at a music video. Oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it, because you're dealing with a rape demon. <laughs> so, uh, 
the point, uh, exactly. So what I'm trying to say is that, and brothers, we're each other's keepers. Sisters, you're each other's keepers. When a room goes silent, when you speak, evidently you said something that you shouldn't have said. Because spiritual people are gonna go, who are you talking about? How did you, how did you mouth those words? How did it come out in your spirit? That spirit is moving. I told you what happened before. This woman was passing. I was in my car and I was like this. Yo, come here. And I said, yo, what are you doing? It's manifesting your spirit. And, I'm, and after I did that, I said, yo, snap, you bugging. Come on, you the devil. <laughs> my arm went like this and I called her. I'm telling you something. Watch those spirits. Watch those spirits around you. When you have, when you have that in you and you do not temper it and mortify and discipline yourself in that, Fetch is going to catch up to you. Now, you remember at the, the last school, there was a brother. Remember, uh, my daughter was two. And he said, oh. your daughter's skirt is too short, brother. I'm looking at her, and that's good. You know, a two year old learning how to walk. You can't have a skirt down around her ankles. And a dude, we had to curse this dude. That's what the hell you looking at a two year She's two years old. <laughs> you freaking weirdo. So that let us know later on, it, and it came out that he was battling with that spirit. It comes out in your speech. It's going to come out. So you brothers, you better curb yourself. Um, read verse 76. Um, same place, 2nd Ezra 16. Oh. Verse 76. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down. That's what happens. You keep playing with it. After a while, it's going to weigh on you, weigh on you. It's going to weigh you down. Go ahead. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. You become consumed in it to the point where you can't get out of it at all. You, you, you're gone. Read the next verse. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. It means now you're in prison now. Now Satan got you. You, you, just, you know what? The Bible says that, but the hell with that. I'm going to keep doing it. You, you're gone. We can't reach you now. now we can, the Bible can't reach you. The scriptures, the door, Bible's closed now. It's a wrap. Go ahead. And covered with their iniquity. Like as a field is covered over with bushes. Like a crackhead. Person smoke crack, yo, bro, listen. Scriptures say be sober, don't do that. All right, you keep smoking crack. After a while, you start eating out of garbage cans. You're gone. Or, you, or you're a pothead, now you're no longer a pothead, now you're a cokehead. Cokehead, now you're in heroin. Heroin, now you're doing molly. Molly, now you're doing ecstasy. It's, you, you start to transcend. You go, what's up to say, um, um, depths of Satan? Revelation says there's depths of Satan. You go, right. you go far beyond, you're gone. To the point where you're no longer you anymore. You're somebody else. Nappy. You're just filled with demons. Nappy, you do ecstasy, you start doing men. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, man, here's a few people I pick up in the morning. Here's a few people I pick up in the morning. You guys don't know the, the gift that God gives you. There's a lot of women I, uh, that is in methadone clinic. Mm -hmm. right. They look like regular people. You meet in the club. I told you I had a chance to go to a, uh, I mean, a guy that I know in the world. Then I was talking to him. He's saying that he oppressed. Young guy. He used to be over at his mom house. Oppressed. Oppressed is when you got bills. You got things to worry about. So I'm thinking, you oppressed. I'm like, what's turn to be oppressed? I remember him. He used to watch a lot of, uh, 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 he used to be in the date things on uh, when dating began, you, uh, people put all uh, oh, five pictures, how they look, this and that. He used to be on that. These women, when you sleep with them, they're full of spirit on them. That's why you see black people, uh, especially black, uh, young black men, they're bugged out their mind. When you're sleeping with these people, they're, they're, they're methadone clinic is a legion of demons on their thing, man. I see people like transform, start laughing. Yeah, yeah this guy. <laughs> then in his speech, he's talking like he's, he's not the one who's talking. He's just talking in the car. I'm like, <laughs> these, that's why you don't understand, man. Most high God is giving you the, the opportunity to change your life around. Leave this world alone. These people in this world, they're, they're crazy, man. These women, they're bugged out. These men, they're bugged out their mind, man. Oh, I got forget. Alcohol. When you are, go beyond, you, when you're far beyond your sin with alcohol, it becomes second nature to you. Like you'll drink it, you'll get drunk, and by the you drink so much. You drink three bottles, four bottles, like it was soda. When you're walking around stumbling everywhere, like, what's, what's the problem? You are drunk. That's the problem. That's the problem. But read on, read the rest of the verse. 77. And, and the path thereof covered with thorns. 
that no man may travel through. To the point we can't reach you no more. You're drunk now, you're high, you finished. Read the next verse. So what happens after that? What's the end result? It is left undressed. Meaning uncovered. You're, now that's the Bible, the laws are gone, you're undressed. Go ahead. It is cast into, fi into the fire to be consumed therewith. It's death. It's time for death now because we can't reach you no more. And I don't think left to you now is the most side to put you to death. Whether it be alcohol poisoning, overdose, it's your death now. It's a wrap. That's the end result of it. Exactly. Get uh, Hebrews 13 and 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. We have counseled many of you brothers and sisters for quite some time. Go ahead. And submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. We ask you to submit yourselves to what we're telling you because our job is to watch over you as spiritual leaders. That's our job, to guide you in a proper way. Go ahead. As they must give account to me. As they that must give account. Because we have to give account to you before the Lord. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy. We want to do it with joy. We, when we send up our prayers, we want to have good prayers for the body, for the brothers and sisters in the congregation here or near or far. Go ahead. And not with grief. We don't want to do this uh, job with grief, meaning what? Why is it grief to us if we got, when your name comes up? Why? Why is it grief? Nobody knows. Shalom. Shalom. It's grief because you as our spiritual fathers, you're responsible for us. And what happens when your kid, your children don't do what you say? You get a what? You get chastised. You get a spiritual spanking. And this is grief to us. We don't want to do, why we got to go through this? Who wants to have classes about this one again, this, this same brother or this sister again, again? Read that, Sirach 3125. Sirach 3125. Show not thy valiantness in wine. Don't show, don't be bold when you drink. That's what, he, that's what the prophet is saying. Go ahead. For wine hath destroyed many. Wine has destroyed many. Go ahead. The furnace proveth the edge by dipping. So the wine the hearts of the proud by drunkenness. By drunkenness. We are not to be drunkards, men or women. And, and especially women. Uh, there's a back, brothers who used to hang in the club. Uh, yeah, we could be real. Let's keep it real. Men would go to the club and we would always look for the, put up a, put a, a, a beach up for me, please. This is what, men be in the clubs, watch. We would look for the women. Which one can we go home with? You couldn't get one, you just wait till late. There'll be that drunk beach in the corner. Hey! And all five brothers go, we're gonna run a train on that one right there. That's what would happen. I'm keeping it real. That's what would happen. Run a train on a drunk beach in the corner. Where, what verse you at? Verse 27. Come on. Wine is as good as life to a man. So the Bible says wine is good as the life of man. Come on. If it be drunk moderately. Only if it's drunk moderately. So it is lawful to drink wine, but moderately. You gotta know your limits. Some of you need to, ah, uh, what's the word? Abstain from all, if you are an alcoholic, the devil himself, the white man say, don't even take a little bit. Cause some of you, what, take that little bit and, and what? Go head first over the deep end. I remember there was a, a sister that used to come to my house named Miss Mary. I believe that was her name. She wanted to break bread with us, but she, she couldn't drink wine. So she would always take this much wine and that much water. My wife, you, you remember her? Mother Mary, remember her? That much water and that much wine. That's what she would do, just so she could break bread and drink with everybody. But then you get those that get this much wine and that much water. Come on, that's, that's crazy. Read that. Wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk moderately. Mm -hmm. What life is then to a man that is without wine? For, for it was made to make men glad. Wine was made to make men glad. It was the, that's the purpose of wine. So you get that little buzz, have a good time. Go ahead. Right, that ain't crack. We ain't talking about crack. Go ahead. Wine measurably drunk and in season. And when? And in season. Meaning there's a season to drink, meaning there's a time to drink. Give me that scripture. Hold that, Liam. Give me the scripture in Acts chapter, is Acts, two, Acts what verse? Acts 2, verse 13. Verse 13. 
verse 12, sorry, 12. Verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Because they began to speak with other tongues. Watch this. Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. He said, These men are drunk. Watch the response. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and, uh, and all of ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. The third hour of the day is, what is that? Is that between 8 and 9? Between 8 and 9 a.m. Peter says, they ain't drunk. This is a 9 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Meaning what? It was never a custom to drink at that time of day. So when we go back to what we just read, remember about the season. Wine, drunk, the part about in season. Sirach 31, verse 28. Wine, measurably drunk and in season. So there's a season to drink. You drink when? Festivities, parties, uh, get little gatherings, social gatherings. That's when you drink. There's a time. Not early in the morning. Go, 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 go. Ah, who does that? That's a sure sign that you got a problem. 9 a.m. in the morning, you're drinking alcohol. There's a problem. Okay, read that again. Read that again. Wine, measurably drunk. Stop. The wine, first of all, it says measurably drunk. Regardless of what time of the day it is, you ain't supposed to be drinking like you, like a fish. Read. And in season. And in season. So even if, because you might say, well, it's at the right time. You're at your house, you know, you're not around anybody. You think that's the time to get stone cold smashed? No. You're still supposed to practice in moderation. That's the key. Moderation. But there's certain times of the day you don't drink at all. Mm -hmm. That's what it meant by saying in season. Like when you go to work. Is that exactly. a time to drink when you go to work? No, not at all. Or when you come here. Exactly. Come here. There's a scripture that tells the priest not to drink before they judge. You know, don't do that. But the Most High says don't do that before you judge matters. Never drink. All right, because it impair your judgment. Did you finish that, Liam? No, sir. What verse you at? 28. Go ahead. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringeth gladness of the heart. Right, it's meant to make you glad. Go ahead. And cheerfulness of the mind. It's supposed to cheer you up. Go ahead. But wine drunken with excess. That, that's that drunk B in the corner. Go ahead. Maketh bitterness of the mind. Yeah, makes bitterness of the mind and piss everybody off. Go ahead. With brawling. With brawling. And quarreling. Doesn't everybody got to hold her or him back? Calm down. Sit down. Shut up. We didn't go. We don't go out to be yelling at each other. We go out to enjoy ourselves, you know? From there. From there. Get me Proverbs 20, verse 1. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Wine is a mocker. Wine will mock you make you do the stupidest things and embarrass you, your husband, your wife, your family, the congregation, it will mock you. Go ahead. Strong drink is raging. Strong drink is raging because now you're out of control. Go ahead. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, put all these scriptures on wine, drinking and meditate on these things. Now, you young men, we've counseled you young men, uh, 20 and up I'm talking about. You might be 20, 21. If you are 20 years old, living with your mama or another brother, cannot afford to take care of a wife, should you, brothers, raise your hand, should you be having sex with her? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So, you, may, you men, listen good. If you are sexing a woman, you cannot care for her. You can't provide shelter for her. You can't provide food or clothing for her. Colossians 3 verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Uh, Abia, look up the word mortify. Let's look that word up. Listen, we got to go by what the Bible says. The man must be able to take care of his responsibilities. It's time we stop living like niggers and spicks. We have to change the mold and do the way God says to do it. Be able to if you're going to lay down with a woman, be able to provide for her. Right. Behind, behind brings responsibility. There's a, what they said, no romance without finance. Remember that yes, record? Right. I remember that record. That was in the world. But even the people, even the woman that made that record, she had some damn sense. 
What <laughs> Gwen? What's her name? Gwen, Gwen, Gwen Guthrie. Right. Gotta have a jail. <laughs> the second meaning: mortify. Uh, subdue. We want the second meaning of mortify. Subdue the body or its needs and desires by self-denial or discipline. That's what mortify means, to deny or self-discipline. So read that again, officer. Mortify, therefore, your members. Subdue the desires of your body. Discipline the desires of your body. Go ahead. Which are upon the earth. Go ahead. Fornication. Fornication, sexual immorality. Fornication is sexual immorality. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection goes with those other sexual lusts that ain't right. You brothers looking at little boys or little girls, pedophiles. You brothers lusting, you want, you want to rape a woman. That's inordinate affection. You scat brothers. Hey, you elder. brothers that like to have sex with women on their <laughs> menstrual. Now that's nasty too. If elder, better don't blood. just leave that so quick. Y'all don't hear there's a doctrine amongst the Israelites of rape? Y'all don't hear that? Y'all don't hear that being specifically pushed hard? There's people coming against us because we're trying to teach the men discipline concerning the woman. So we're not making this stuff up. There's brothers that are holding the Bible on the streets, okay, speaking Hebrew with long Hebrew names, telling men, you know you can rape a woman, right? Y'all ain't see that? Okay, so there's brothers, as the elder said. Some of y'all may have that thought process up in here. Some of y'all got sick minds. And you need to discipline, you need to mortify. The thoughts come into a lot of men's minds. But what they do, they discipline. They think about it for a minute. Hey, this camp is saying that. There should be something inside you saying, this is wrong. What makes you not say this is wrong is you have a lack of what? Discipline. That's why Christ had disciples with him. They were disciplined. Now, Deacon Hatan got up. I wish he would have still been here. He, me and him were speaking the other day. He pointed out to me that there's like four new camps attacking us. And the number one, the bunt of the attack is Israel United and Christ are like Christians because they teach you can only have one wife. Mm, that's crazy. Read that again, Officer Leon. Mortify. Therefore, your members. What does mortify men, brothers? What does Lord mortify mean? Subdue or discipline. Go ahead. Therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. Can we look up concupiscence? That's a hard word. That, that ain't a common Negro word. See, your concupiscence, strong sexual desire, lust. Notice it says evil concupiscence in the Bible. So it's evil, strong sexual desires. Rape is evil concupiscence. Sex with little children is evil concupiscence. Give me some more. Sex with animals is evil concupiscence. S uh, sex with same sex is evil concupiscence. What else? Scat is evil concupiscence. <laughs> Don't Google that. Do not Google that. <laughs> Got a sort of fingers about to type it in. No, don't do that. Um, that thing is so bad, you'll have the suits showing up at your door? Is it that it's bad? It's bad. It's bad. Damn. It's that bad. Where we at? Verse 5. Concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Give me Matthew 5, 27. What's wrong with looking at porn? I don't see nothing wrong with it. It's just a little bump and grind on the screen. You ain't hurt nobody. We know a lot of you brothers struggle with it. And we, don't, we can't cast judgment on what you're doing in your mind. You're thinking about this one and that one. We as men can't judge you on that. But read that Matthew 5, 27. Matthew 5 and 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman. Looketh at a woman. To lust after to her. To lust after Now, this ain't, this ain't, right, that's what we just looked, dealt with. This lust, because brother may ask, wait a minute. What's wrong with looking at a woman? When you get married, you look at a woman, you lust, you like her. That ain't what Christ's talking about. He ain't talking about you look at a woman, you want to make that your wife. That's not what he's talking about. Read it again. And, but I say unto you, that whosoever 
looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. The key is adultery. So with him putting a, adding adultery to the scenario, is he talking about marriage? You want that woman for marriage? No. You want that woman for what? For sex. That's it. You don't want to marry her. You just want a little bump and grind. That's evil concupiscence. Why? It falls under whoredom, fornication. You want sex but no commitment to her. You don't want no family with her, nothing. Just sex and get the hell out. Read it again. This is pornography, go ahead. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman. Cause when you're looking at porn, you're looking at a woman on the screen, go ahead. To lust after her. And you are lusting after her, 34D, her size. What's the small waist for women? Uh, that's too big. Uh, size 20, waist, I don't know. Anorexic, whatever. Go ahead with the story. Go ahead with the, the verse. To lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. See that? If you're looking after her for lust, for sex only, that's adultery in your heart, in meaning in your mind. On anorexic porn. On anorexic porn. <laughs> I don't know. I just took a guess. I don't know. Give me, a, give me a porn star. Who knows a porn star? Just name one. Who? Who? Pinky. Pinky, okay, Pinky. You don't want to make that joke, why you? Look at Pinky, Pinky! <laughs> Hand me the Vaseline, the lotion, the lube. That's what happens, and cut the lights off. And then, what you doing in the money there, business? <laughs> Thank you, brother, thank you. Get up. <laughs> You read, <laughs> you read verse 28, Liam? Yes, sir. You read it? Yes, sir. All right, give me Mark 7 and 21. Now, I know we, 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 we are we're laughing at it, but I know some of you are taking it very serious, and you should take it serious. This is a very serious subject, yes. The alcoholism, the pornography, evil concupiscence. Elder. Yes. So how do you truly repent from that? We're going to deal with it. Just bear with us. Bear with us. Now, the emotional and mental state of brothers that and sisters dealing with alcoholism, uh, pornography, there's always a mental, like uh, Bishop was talking about, there's a, it'll start to come out of your mouth because it starts to change your frame of thought, your conversation. Mark 7, 21, Officer Leon. Mark 7, 21. This is the attributes you start to take on. For from within, out of the heart of men. For from within, out of your heart, when it says your heart, it means your mind. Go ahead. Proceed, evil thoughts. So one of the first things is evil thoughts start, start to change the way you are. You come in the truth, repenting Israelite, but you're meddling in the sin. Now your mind starts to have evil thoughts. That's why it says out of the heart, it's talking about your mind. Go ahead. Adultery. And it's going to name some of the attributes. Adultery thoughts. Fornication. Thoughts of fornication. Murders. Thoughts of murder. Theft. Thoughts of theft. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. L let's, can we look up lascivious? That's another hard non-Negro Latino word. And lascivious means inclined to lustful, wanton, or lewd. Arousing sexual desires. Indicating sexual interest or expressive of lust or lewdness. So it goes with concupiscence. It's all up here. Evil sexual thoughts. That's what it's going into. I hope some of you brothers dealing with that is really taking it serious. Read that on. An evil eye. An evil my eye means hatred. That's what an evil eye is. First Samuel 18 verse 9. And Saul eyed David from the day and forward. In verse 8. And Saul was very wroth. Was angry. And the, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have as ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forth. So Saul had hatred for David. So that when it talks about an evil eye, that's what it's talking about. How you look at somebody, you hate him, you're mad with him. That's what it's talking about in evil eye in Mark 7 and 21. Back to Mark 7, 21. Did you finish that verse? No, sir. Verse 22. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Y'all see that? All pride. 
pride comes with those thoughts when you're dealing in porn, alcoholism. It, you can, I'm using porn and alcohol because that's what we dealt with today. But it can be crack. It can be the spirit of slothfulness. It could be hatred. All those mentals, what we're reading in Mark 7, are mental and emotional attributes that come with those sins. You men understand that? Go back to the pride. Go back to that. An evil eye, uh -huh. blasphemy, mm -hmm. pride. Pride. Mm -hmm. Foolishness. Foolishness. Go ahead. All these evil things come from within. All these evil things come from your mind. That's what it means, come from within. Go ahead. And defile the man. And you are defiled. If you don't check those lusts, it's those, what we just read, will start to manifest in your spirit. Then you want to know why you act, brothers, why are you acting like that? This ain't you. Why are you being laid on the work of the Most High? Because the work of the Most High is going to suffer, especially you brothers do the video editing. So all of a sudden, the work starts getting later and later. Why? Because you're on the computer looking at Pinky or Hente or whatever you're looking at. And the keys, my, I got to get a new keyboard. Why? They're, all the keys are stuck. <laughs> the hell is this? This is just nasty. Don't touch his keyboard. Y'all thinking I'm joking, but that actually, that happened, not here. It was another brother that was here. Wow. He busted a brother doing that, and it's nothing. Anyway, um, give me Ephesians 6 and 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. When it says take unto you the whole armor of God, it means the whole Bible. The Bible is your armor. Learn everything in the Bible. Learn it. Because like we saw at the beginning of the video, when that flag, a lot of you, a lot of us don't know ourselves. I give an example. I give an example. This is a low-level example. I'm at work. I'm at work. This was years ago. I got to throw it here years ago. Because somebody happy yesterday. No, not yesterday. I, to me, I don't have a covetous spirit when it comes to money, any of that thing. That's not in me. Also, I thought, I'm at work. Lady got robbed, Chinese lady, going to the store. Everything's in disarray. So I'm taking, doing a report. So she says, she says, wait here, I gotta go deal with the customer. So I'm doing a report and nothing. And I notice there's like, the thieves left like five single $100 bills. So I see the money there. And I start to look around for cameras. Then I call her, what the hell am I looking around for cameras for? That's the damn devil in me. That is the damn devil. I'm not cut with the hell. But the most I was saying, the thought, the possibility is there with all of us. And whatever it is, you don't know yourself until you are put in a situation. Understand that. You don't know yourself. That's right. The thought of foolishness. Okay? Some of you don't know you're alcoholics until so you take that fifth sip. Then you start giggling a lot. And some of you want to fight. Then you go, wait a minute. I didn't know I was like this. Like, I give a true story in Connecticut. Brother and the wife sitting there drinking. You know the story, lover. Wife starts sipping. All of a sudden, she punched her husband in the face. Pow! She said, I never liked you, nigga. <laughs> so what the hell? You know what I'm talking about, Captain Shem? Okay. Not you, not Shem, but it's somebody else in Connecticut. So, so, Elder, punched him right in the face. You saying the alcohol is true, sir? It's true, sir. I'm <laughs> telling you. It's going to come out. She didn't know she was an alcoholic till that came. Oh, man. Right, it's a marker. That's what happens. Where you at, Officer Leon? Verse 13. Go ahead. Wherefore, excuse me, Ephesians 6, 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day for you might be tomorrow, might be tonight. Like a brother, oh, I don't got a lust problem, but a sister wants me to come over and teach her the scriptures. <laughs> brother, if she want to learn the scriptures, have her come to the school. Brother. She's far. I'm going to go to her house. Everything's all right. I'm in the spirit. You're not in the spirit. Tell her to come here. I'm in the spirit. I got this. Next day, you know what I'm talking about. Next, we see the brother next Sabbath. Brother, what happened? The head's down, brother. I went to the house, and she had a nightgown on, a see-through negligee. And somehow the Bible ended up under the bed. And I ended up on top of the bed, and she ended up on top of me. I said, but you got the damn devil on you. This was a while ago, but these are the, and he said, he was, well, I don't have lust problems. I don't deal with that. You never know until you're put in a situation. Like Joseph, remember the situation he was put in with Potiphar's wife? Said, lay down with me. I'm good looking, black as night. 
I look good. He said, no, you the devil, get away. She ripped the towel off from around his butt. He ran butt naked down the hall just to get away from her. So he knew, he knew how to battle that demon. Where you at, officer? Verse 13, mm -hmm. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. So as I said, the evil day for you brothers might not be right now, might be next week. But your evil day of temptation is going to come for every man and every woman. Here come a sister. I want to tell you, you know this story. Last, the last school, she go, here go the sister. Because a lot of times, Brandon, we think women don't deal with those sex issues. You know, sometimes women, anyway. But there's some that do. What they call them? Nymph, them nymphos. Here she go. Brother, can I talk to you? I saw that women just annoy me. So what, sister, what do you want? Why don't you talk to the sisters? <laughs> can I talk to you? It's real serious. So I go, hey, okay, what's going on? She said, I got a problem with me and my husband. I said, yeah, where's your husband at? He's a down, he's somewhere. She, he went down the hall or something. You remember, you know. So she goes, I got a lust problem. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, okay, you got a lust problem. All right, and? She says, well, you know, it got so bad that um, I'll be on a train coming to the school, and I watch men come on a train, and I don't look at their faces. I just look right at the crotch. So I'm looking at her. She's the damn devil I'm talking to here. <laughs> so she goes, and now I'm having dreams about all the men in the school and what, they, what size they are. I said, what are you telling me this for? Why don't you talk to the women? Talk to the sisters. I don't want to hear this. I said, Did you? she said, well, last I had a dream. I said, another, wait, wait, wait. Are you telling your husband these things? She says, yes, I'm telling him. I said, don't. Some things, you know, you have wicked and foul dreams. Keep them to yourself. Don't go spreading it. I've dreamt about an ox the other day. You damn devil. Don't be telling me that. I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. Repent, the Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. I shouldn't have dreamt. I don't know where it came from. It ain't me. But anyway, so the sister, you remember that, what happened? The moral to the story. The moral to, why did I tell a story? No, no, no. You forgot what she did? What did she do? Tell became a stripper. <laughs> oh, yeah, she became a stripper. The woman became a stripper. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. This is a true story. He knows the story. He was there. One night, I asked the brother, brother, everything at home sexually with you and your wife? Everything good? He said, brother, I got this. Say it with your chest. I got this. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm handling my business. I'm handling my business. All right, bro. You know, brothers, y'all don't want to confide or say what's, if there's a problem. All right, leave it alone. Y'all might think I'm not, I'm not nosy. You don't want to talk about something. I'll leave it. I don't want to push too hard. I'll leave it until it becomes manifest. Then I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to say, didn't I talk to you about this? Mm -hmm. So my wife is having, I forgot who the child was it? I think Nehemiah was born. Anyway, she's at the hospital, and the brother comes to the hospital. He's crying. I said, bro, everybody here congratulating the wife on my son's being born. Why'd you hear her crying for, my wife been gone for two days. She been gone for two days. Now, I know what I was thinking. I'm thinking back now on all the conversations she had. But I said, bro, everything going to be all right, brother. She's coming <laughs> back. She's coming back real hard soon. Days later... Days later, she comes back and she says, uh, I, I, I bumped into this guy and, you know, I was looking at him and he was looking at me and um, uh, he just invited me uh, over his house and uh, I was there for a while and he did his, I'll use the word business, he did his business on me all, all, all on my face and then told me to get out. Oh. You remember that? Remember the story I told you about that? <laughs> Jizzed all over her face. I use it. Can I say that word? Yeah. That's an easy word. That's a Negro word. Y'all know that word. So she, she's with her head hanging out. I said, I said, look, bro, she a hoe, and the hoe got to go. Throw, throw her away. She ain't no damn good. She's used merchandise. You don't got the love of Jesus on you. That's what I had to hear. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Whole school attacked me. I said, what the hell is this? She's no good. She's a hoe. Anyway, that's the moral of the story. Your evil day, oh yeah, that was the point. Your evil day might not be now, but everybody gets tempted in his or her day is going to come, going to come. Now, where we at? Uh, you mean finish reading? Yeah, finish reading that. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So being able to stand means learn the Bible. Some of you just, you, you say, okay, I got a, a, uh, a problem with... Uh, uh, 
stealing. I'll use that word, stealing. So you study all the scriptures on stealing. But what about the scriptures on adultery? What about studying that? What about the scriptures on lying? Oh, brother, I ain't got no problem. Put on the whole armor means learn the whole Bible. Meditate on everything the Bible has for, that's in there because it's going to help you when your day comes. We don't know ourselves until we're put in that particular situation. You know, we don't. And having done all to stand. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt, up, girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Can I say some other please? When it says, like, having done all to stand, what it's telling you to do is whatever it takes. If you have to cut off cable, you cut, if you got to cut off cell phone, get yourself an old flip phone. If you, whatever, do whatever it takes to rid what's expedient for you to grow spiritually, you have to rid whatever is going to harm you. So people say, I'm all right. You might be all right today. But if you know that there's an issue that you have, you do whatever it takes to stand. Some of you just can't cut off the cable. You don't have to have teeth. What you need in life is you need these commandments. That's what you need in life. You need food, water, roof over your head. Having a cell phone, you don't need one if you find yourself watching porn in the bathroom at work. You don't need a computer if that's what you're doing. Doing whatever it takes to keep your soul intact. You understand that? So when the elders tell you you have to know this whole Bible, you have to know this whole Bible because this Bible is going to teach you about you. It's going to uncover all your deep, dark, wicked secrets that you have lying in you. The words of God will reveal it and show you how to escape it or do it your way. Now, to show you again, I'm going back to that poem just for a second, how it can control you. Brothers at work, you remember this story too. Brothers at work, he comes to the school mad. He want to kill everybody in his office on the job. I said, what happened? You remember? I told you. I said, what happened? Why do you want to kill everybody in your job? He said, they ain't right. They laughed at me. I said, what the hell are they laughing at you for? I don't understand. Make it plain. Make it plain. He said, I was jerking off in the office, and they opened the door and saw me. <laughs> I said, you got that damn devil on you. And don't give me no salute. Right. Keep your hand to yourself. What the hell? I said, what the hell are you doing jerking off at work? Or period for that matter. If it was that, if the lust was that bad, why did you go to the bathroom? No, I couldn't help it. I said, you look at porn? He said, I look at porn. I said, it has taken over your mind now. You are so controlled now. He didn't care where he was at. He, he was in a room with, all, you know them offices, they got, uh, what they call them thing? <laughs> Cubicles. He's sitting there in front of the, I said, you are stupid. I said, you got the damn devil on you. And you need to be mocked and laughed at. There's a scripture we're going to read that later on about how your enemies will mock you and laugh at you. So you ain't killing nobody. Just sit down and repent. You need to be laughed at. Where you at? Oh, that's it. Well, verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt, up, girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's Was that it? it? That's it. From there, real quick. Go to back to 1 Peter 2 and 11. We're going right back there because a lot of y'all don't believe this. I got it under control. I got it under control. I'm good. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm water baptized, filled with the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, right. You got the devil on you. 1 Peter 2.11. 1 Peter 2.11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Fleshly lusts war against your soul. It wars against your soul. That's what I need y'all men to understand. This is, you are at war. This is a spiritual war. Everything the white man has in his media wars against your soul. Remember the first Calvin Klein uh, ad on uh, at 34th Street, 42nd? You see Mark Wahlberg, was it Mark Wahlberg? And his draws with, a, with his, right there on his crotch, right there. Who the, and the, everybody's like, why the hell? It was like a 30-foot billboard. Right, we used to teach that. I said, what the hell? All of that was to in incite lasciviousness. Then there's one, there's a jean company where the woman got the, her jeans, and you see the crack of her behind like that much, and there's a man next to her. All of these things, is, is at, it wars against our soul, and it affects us. I want you to understand, don't think you ain't being affected. You are. Watch this, Galatians 5, 17. Galatians 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, 
so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So notice what it says. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. The flesh involves all those sexual sins. All those sins like we dealt with alcoholism, crack, um, porn, um, drugs. All these things pull you to join in with it. That's why it says the flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit is the word of God. Then it says, and the spirit against the flesh. The word of God wars against those fleshly lusts. Understand that, man. You may understand what we're saying? Yes, sir. Now, watch this. Go back to the video, Abiel. Stay right there at 620. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse, watch this, man. Watch this. Jump down to verse 19. Let's discuss, in this war, who are the bad guys in this war? Verse 19 is going to, verse 19 to 21. Who are the bad guys? Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? These are the bad guys. Go ahead. Adultery, uh -huh. fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Reveling is partying. Go ahead. And such like of the which I tell you before. As I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So in this war, this spiritual war, we are fighting against these things. Idolatry, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, witchcraft that deals with horoscopes, things of that nature. Hatred, violence, emulation, wrath, and strife. Now let's see who the good guys are. Jump down to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Now y'all know love is what? Keeping of the commandments. That's what love is. Love, right. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Right. If you do those things in the keeping of the commandments, there's no law against you. There's no condemnation for you. So you got to identify the bad guys and the good guys. Go back to 620. Remember it says take up the armor that you may, how did it say? Y'all help me out here against the fiery darts of the enemy. Remember that? Of the wicked. Play, play it again. Now Rome is the bad guys. These are your bad guys. That's a warning. You're dealing with alcoholism. You're dealing with child porn, scat, whatever. Now all these guys here with their arrows, that's the emulation, strife, lasciviousness, pornography. Here's the enemies that you got to fight in within your mind. All of the fiery darts there. And you standing on the other side in the spirit with love, joy, and peace. Let's see what happens. Now you get shot up, you're hurt. I didn't know adultery could do that to me. Yeah, here come the enemy. Rome is the enemy. Those are the bad guys. Look at it, look at it. You got taken out. Wrath, hatred, witchcraft. Here you go. There's your spirit now. You want to do right. You want to do right. Here come the enemy. Here come the bad guys. They all arm it up. Here it come. That's uncleanness. Yeah, that's that white woman you like. This is your spirit, brothers. This is your spirit. You are at war, like we said, read in Galatians 5. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and these are contrary one to the other. It says, avoid fleshly lust, which war against your soul. So you got to imagine war. I can handle you. I, come on, come on. Yeah, watch. Here you go. You got all your scriptures. You ain't armored up. No helmet, nothing. Look at it, look at it, there you go. Right in the back. There you go. The devil got his armor on. Here you go, that's uncleanness again. That was in order to affect you. And now they come from the rear. They come from the back. Now you gotta split your forces. Right, all them doors in your mind opening up. Now you stabbed up, look at you. Head off now, look at that. There you go, down. There you go. 
Uh oh, you, 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 you look like you winning. You look like you win. Oh, they got somebody else. Here come the bad guys. Oh, your hand is off now. That was it. Thank you. This is you being overcome. This is you being overcome. Sirach 18 and 30, please. I just want to give you out a visual because we read about war in your spirit and brothers don't really understand that thing. As I'm looking at this, it's like a book. You know, your life is like a book. A lot of us thinking like when we, when we come in the truth, everything we used to be just gone because you say I repented. No. You know, like this is, a, this is you. You come in, the page flip. This is everything you used to be. This is the beginning. These pages is waiting to flip back. You, you understand what I'm saying? Those don't go. I mean, they, they all you don't go. It's still there, but you got clean slate. The pages of what is a clean slate. But look at this. The stack, this is you. This is the old you. That's the big stack. But this is the new you, the little stack. The big stack never go, it's still there. It's just waiting to flip over. It's up to you. That's what, the, that's what they're saying, there is a fight. The spirit is fighting against the flesh. That, and guess what? That war will never be over until Christ come back. Right. That war will never be over. Don't wait, because when you look at Romans chapter seven, that's what Paul is talking about. Paul is telling you he's in a war. There is a war going on. And that war will never be over. I mean, it's like Paul said, I went to Mosai to take that spirit. Mosai said, no. You got enough to fight it. You must fight it. That's what your brothers got to understand. The, the deacon just said, the deacon said that when you come in, you're, uh, it's not like all of the problems that you thought that you were going through just stop. No, that's when your fight just began. Because when you were out there, you were actually in agreement with everything that you were doing wrong. It's only when you became conscious under the law, then you realize that you're supposed to be fighting the things that you were once in agreement with. That's when your fight begins. That's where the endurance come in. That's where you have to put on the whole armor of the Most High and all of that to help fight these demons that you now realize that were warring against your soul. Because once you, when, before you came into this, you were in agreement with it. You weren't warring against nothing. You was, you was just like the scriptures speak about that the people will look at you strange that you don't run with the same excessive riot because you was in agreement with them. Now that you've come into this, now all of a sudden that old crowd is a, is a, is a hindrance, is an enemy to you. So now you begin to actually start the fighting then. Exactly. Get that in Romans 7. Let me back you up what you said. Romans 7 and 7. Even, you know what, with all that we've discussed, it, uh, it hinges on marriages too. Because this is what I hear with brothers. How many brothers are here married? How many brothers argue with their wife? Good. Now, this is what happens. I'm mad at my wife. You know what? We argue so bad, I'm leaving you. I want to get a new one. So this is what I hear. So I go, brother, so you want to leave her and get a new wife? What are the chances that he's going to argue with the new wife? A hundred percent. So the problem's not going to go away. You have to learn to fix what you got. Make it work. We you at? <laughs> Hold up. In their head, there's a magical place where wives come from that don't argue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. There's You're this right. mystical place that they think they're just going to find this wife. And she's just going to be dancing every day. And honey, what do you want when you wake up? That's what's going on in their head. <laughs> That's what's going on in their head. They really believe they're just going to replace this one. And this beautiful wife is going to come. And every day is going to be lollipops and gumdrops. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Where you at, officer? Romans 7, verse 7. Because Yawasab said, um, Deacon Yawasab, you said, you made a point. You said, the fight begins when you come in the truth. The things that you agree with in the world, it's when you come in the truth, you realize they were wrong. Here's the proof. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So when you come in the truth and start to study, you, then you start to examine yourself. Now you realize, oh, I can't lust after other women like I used to do. I thought that was okay. I've been looking at porn since I was third, maybe some of us three. Keep it here. Terry Crews is still here. So he's got this new book, it's called Manhood. And in the book, he writes about 
sex addiction. Yes, yes. Well, I was addicted to pornography since I was 12 years old. I don't know that I believe in sex addiction, so t tell me about it. Well, let me, let me tell you, it's funny, because I had, my father was addicted to alcohol, uh -huh. and my mother was addicted to religion. So what happens is you had an addictive household, okay? Yes. I was not allowed to, we weren't allowed to play sports, we weren't allowed to watch movies, we weren't allowed to, uh, my mother had, you know, no makeup, the whole thing. And it was wild because- Where'd I you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Flint, Michigan. Okay, go but ahead. It, my, my mom was Kojic, which is uh, Church of God in Christ, which oh. back in the day, oh. you just didn't do nothing, okay? okay. Nothing was legal. Okay. Yeah. All right, except you, know, you, can watch, you can't watch Jaws in the theater, but you can watch it when it come on TV. Yes. So, uh, it was a lot of mixed messages, in my, and, and there was a lot of violence, a lot of abuse. What I did... How is, many siblings? I have an older brother and a younger sister. So you would go in your room at 12 years old and you'd watch porn? Well, no, but well, you go to the uncle's house. Okay. It was always the uncle's basement. Everybody got an uncle's basement. Yes. Okay, the first time... I, but, well, I gotta say this, because this is the thing. I would... Me, it's one of those things that took me away, and it medicated me, and... and, mm -hmm. and but, but this is the problem. This is the problem. I never told anyone. Never told. I didn't tell my wife. Now, you've been years. married to Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca, for 25, 25 years. 25 years. Now, and... And... Um... You write about infidelity um, in the book. Yes. And, um, and, but we were talking through the commercial break and you were saying that you, you as a family had been dealing with this and now it's been about five years. Yeah. So you're healed and it feels very cathartic to write well, about it's, it. It's one of those things where the, the pornography addiction turns into something else. You can't have something like that in your life without it growing into something else. Everything grows, whatever you keep in your life. Uh, and see, every man at one time in his life, is a fool, a victim, or a king. Yes. A fool is, is gets mad when people try to help you. You know what I mean? Okay. You're like, hey, hey what, leave me alone. I'm in the street. I'm going to stay in the street. Leave me alone. And a car hits you, and it's like, bam. Right. Then you're a victim. And, and what happens is you mess your whole life up, and then you're, 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 you're like, blaming everybody. You're like, it's my wife, it's my kids. And let Got me tell you, you. A, a victim is where the addiction stage lives. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. you get mad at your wife, you're like, well, I need this, because I need to watch pornography, because, you know, these people tripping, and, you know, nah, 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 and she ain't doing it, and, and you start blaming her. How did you, how were you able to hide that from Rebecca for so long? Would you go down to the, your uncle's basement? No, no, <laughs> no, well, you, you're talking about, see, but you're talking about over the course of uh, a lot what? of years. I had this a long time before I even met her. Uh -huh. But then what was happening is, you know, you're talking about the internet. Yeah. And the inter this is the thing. Uh, the internet is a powerful, powerful thing. But you have to, you know, you have to gauge yourself. You have to watch. And, uh, that's the way I would do it was internet, por internet pornography. Gotcha. So it would grow into something else. I don't know. Now you find out that's wrong. Tag, I can't do that no more. The Bible says no. You got you to gotta mortify your members. Uh, Sirach 1830. Can I add one more thing? Oh, yeah. And what he was just saying about replacing the wives. You men with that mindset, you ain't built for this. You're a weak man. And that's why the other camps, they put out there for you, they push the multiple wives things. Because they don't want to be in a relationship with a woman where they have to apply the commandments to make things work. They don't want to be in a relationship, in a committed relationship, where you got to hear the person out. Well, you got to take them to the scriptures. Where she's going to prove you wrong, you're going to prove her wrong. Well, you're going to put in that work to show that this Bible works. So what's the easiest thing to do? Have one wife here, one wife there, one wife there, one wife there. That's easy. And then, yes, threaten to beat them up or tell them I'm not coming back. You know that one is going to miss you because you already told her. She already knows well. You already trained me in the lie that there could be multiple wives. So you know with time... The woman don't see her after a while, she'll come back, she'll be with him because she needs help. She's in that condition or she just wants um, pleasure, okay? But those camps that teach that you can have multiple wives, they are weak, undisciplined men. Because that would be easy in this walk. If you could just argue with this one, then call this one up and go to the house, fly to this over here, go to California, go here, and you got a wife waiting for you there, a wife waiting for you there. What do you really have to go through in this walk? Nothing. A real man got to stay there, go through the scriptures, deal with the anger, deal with the crying, deal with the arguing, deal with the bills, deal with the fighting, Not the deal bills. with the discipline. Not the bills. <laughs> Not the bills. Okay? Not the bills. Hey, uh, uh, ASAP, if I could say something. And I'm going to tell you, it's hypocrisy with them. For the, and the reason I'm going to say this, and now that's my segue, uh, is that they, they, they keep on with this multiple wives stuff, yet they still sleep with other men's wives. 
They're not even happy with the women they got. They're going to men that got wives, and they're taking their wives. It's all whoredom. So back to the point you was making about your weak spirit. You're a weak spirit because you will not apply God's laws. The Most High gave you that woman. Whatever you have, problems you got with her, you cannot move on to another woman. You cannot. God does not command you. You know, the line is, her, she's off. Something's wrong with her. So that justified me leaving. It does not. God said, except to be for fornication, you cannot take another wife. <laughs> Who has a problem with that? Does anybody have a problem with one wife? Nope. All right, cool. Now we're going to address that in a few minutes. Get Sirach, watch this, brother. Sirach 1830. Sirach 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust. Go not. At, this is, y'all want to know how to help yourselves in these conditions? Read it. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Your appetite might be crack. You might have an appetite for it. Your appetite might be weed. That might be an appetite. Your appetite might be porn. Your appetite might be sloth, which is laziness. Your appetite might be alcohol. Your appetite might be witchcraft. You like Dublin horoscopes. Read it again the verse. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Refrain yourself from your appetite. Watch this, Romans 6 and 12. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. The word reign means rule. So Christ is speaking through Paul here. He says, don't let breaking God's laws rule you. Don't let breaking God's laws rule your life. Go ahead. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. That you should obey those lusts in the lust thereof. Come on. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Your members is going into your thoughts, your mind, your hand. It says your hands, your mouth. Read it again. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness uh -huh. unto sin. Okay. But yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not rule you. That's what dominion, dominion means, to rule, to dominate. Sin shall not dominate your life. Breaking God's laws should not dominate your life. What verse you in? Verse 14. Go ahead. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. When it says you're not under the law, it means you're not under the law of Moses, the old covenant, where it was death, death, death. But it says you're under grace, which is Christ, the New Testament. Christ said all manner of sin can be forgiven. So Christ said whatever you've done, you can be forgiven for it. Read. What then? Shall we sin? Because, what, because you're under Christ, under the new covenant, should we keep on sinning? Just keep on breaking the law and say, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy. Let's keep on doing it. Go ahead. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. So could we keep sinning? Because we're not under the law of Moses, but under the law of Christ, the new covenant? God forbid. No. God forbid means no. 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 Read. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey. So whoever you decide that you're going to obey, that's whose servant you are. He's going to explain. Go ahead. Whether of sin unto death. So you might decide you want to serve sin. You might decide I like the whoremonger life. I'm going to serve that. I like the alcoholic life. I'm going to serve that. I like the pornography life. I'm going to serve that. I like the weed addiction. I'm going to serve that. Go ahead. Or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked. So that's keeping God's laws. You have the choice. The Paul is saying the choice is yours. That's the same thing Moses said, I set before you life and death. Choose ye therefore life. Paul's saying the same thing right there in Romans, the sixth chapter. Choose who you will serve. What verse you at? Verse 17. Go ahead. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. So now jump from there. Go to back to 2 Ezra 1667. We read this earlier. We're almost done. 2nd Ezra 16, 67. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. Behold, 
God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever. Meddle no more with your sin. That's why the Bible says each of us must examine ourselves. You know what your sin is. You know what your sin is. Meddle no more with it. Don't play with it. Oh, I got this. I'll just do a little bit today. Don't meddle with it. Cut it off cold turkey if you can. Watch this. Now, the steps on being healed from the various issues. That's what you was asking. Give me uh, Psalms 32 and 5. So the first thing is, like we just read, write this down, solutions. One of the first solutions is don't meddle with your sin. Don't play around with it. Write that down under solutions. Second Ezra 16, 67, do not meddle with your sin. Don't meddle with your problems. Don't play with your problems. Now Psalms 32 and 5. Psalms 32 verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. So the first thing, one of the first things you got to do other than not meddling with it is acknowledge your sin. A lot of times we don't want to acknowledge it, what's wrong with us. And that's the importance of when you come, when you're on your own, you know what? It is hard for many of our, our people to identify their problems. You know when you start to identify your problems, who can help me? When do you start to identify your problems? Because you, it's hard to do it on your own. Yes, Levi. And start to show you. What, what, what? And start, to, start to point it out. Right, when others, that's the reason why a lot of brothers and sisters say, I don't want to be around no congregation. I'm going to stay by myself. Why? Because when you're around brothers and sisters, people will start to see how you are and go, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. What did you just say? What did you just do? That's not right according to the scripture. So when you hear people say, uh, give me that script, hold that, where you at? Get me the one in Hebrews 10, 25, thank you. This is why a lot of brothers and sisters, especially on Facebook, I don't like being with no congregation. I'll be by myself. In Yahshua's name, amen. And they in everybody's <laughs> business. Right, right, and they in everybody's they in business. Ev they in every camp's business with their nose and saying they don't want to, that's why I don't join no camp. Right. You got that, Officer Leon? Hebrews 10, verse 25. Watch this, listen good. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the man of some is. Right. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So God's law says don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. One of the benefits of assembling yourselves and talking with brothers and sisters, they may start to see things in you that you don't realize. Like the spirit of uh, pride or hate. You might think it's normal to not let other people speak and to speak over them. Brother, wait, whoa, whoa, bro, come on, man. Scriptures say don't interrupt the man of speech, uh, hear brother out. Little thing, that's just an example. Okay, back to where you was at. The other one. Where Psalms was 32 verse 5. Right. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Notice it says unto thee. That's unto the most high. Acknowledge your sin to him. Go ahead. And mine iniquity have I not hid. Don't hide your iniquity from the Lord. Some of us, well, Lord, you know what I'm going through. He want to hear you confess the thing to him. Go ahead. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So one of the first things, one of the first solutions outside of not meddling is confessing to the Lord. Confessing it. Okay? The next one, let's get, get me the one in James. James. The one, confess your faults. You know, you got it, Leon? Yes, sir. Go, where you at? James chapter 5, verse 16. Go ahead. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Now, when it says confess, now be careful with that one. Be careful with that one. You don't want to go around. That's why I need to one. Choose you out a counselor. One of a... Sirach six. Get Sirach 6. The, the precept of what we read in James, I want to give you some understanding. Sirach 6. Find that for me, please. Sirach 6, verse 6. I want everybody to get it. Sirach 6, verse 6. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless... Have but one counselor of a thousand. So do not run around telling everybody your personal intimate sins. Find a brother or a sister you can confide in and talk with them, counsel. Now, listen good, listen good. That does not mean if you reveal sin, something evil, that they are to keep it secret. 
I got a murderous spirit on me, brother. I just murdered somebody the other day. I can't help it. That's between you and me. No, 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 no. The Bible tells you about that in Leviticus 5. If you hear sin and know of it, confess, you got to tell it. Meaning, so, but if there's a struggle you're going through, that's what I'm talking about. Find you one counselor. Was that it, Liam? Yes, sir. Get Sirach 32, 18 and 19. Sirach 32, what verse? 18 and 19. 18. A man of counsel will be considerate. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Even, with, even when of himself he have done without counsel. Right. Now that's heavy. You know why? Read the whole thing again. That's heavy. A man of counsel will be considerate. A man of counsel will be considerate. Sometimes we hear things. We don't put people on front street. We hear it. We talk to you. We bring you up to the table. We'll counsel you. And we'll leave it alone. The only time it's going to if you keep doing it and it starts to come out, now we got to put you on blast. Because you're not listening to the counsel. Read. But a strange and proud man. But a strange and proud man. Is not daunted. Is not daunted. Mean, go ahead. With fear. Read the whole so, verse again. You just confuse me. But a strange and proud. Read the whole verse again. A man of counsel will be considerate. Uh huh. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. He's not a strange or proud brother. Is not daunted with fear. Go ahead. Even when of himself he have done without counsel. That's that brother who wants to pass judgment on others, but he knows he himself is guilty of the same thing. Don't be like that. Now, from there. Uh. Verse 19. 19. Do nothing without advice. Right. Do nothing without advice. And when thou hast done... Here goes a brother. I want to ask this sister's father, can I, can I lay in the same bed with his daughter but not have sex with her? Brother, don't do that. You're going to get punched in the face. Oh, man. Don't ask that. So we give you, don't do that. You're going to get a beat down. <laughs> A lot of y'all looking at us like, like nah, that can't be true. Nobody would be stupid enough to ask and say such a thing. Hey, hey y'all lucky that y'all got men that y'all could come to with these stupid questions. Right. Because most of the people who I went to with stupid questions were stupid. <laughs> okay? And they all told me the wrong thing to do. I didn't have the type of men that y'all have now growing up to guide me and stop me from making mistakes. I grew up around idiots. Everything wicked I went to do, I had a cheering section cheering me on in wickedness. Exactly. I'll give you an example. Story time. At the old school, the first Israelite camp school, we had a, there was a class with the men, we had a men's class, and a brother raised his hand to one of the teachers. He said, me and my wife argue and argue and argue. How can I get her to shut the hell up? The teacher says, listen. See, now the teacher used to be an ex-pimp. This is what he says. He says, bro, let me help you out there. You punch her in the stomach real hard. And if she's laying there in pain, you have sex with her. That's how you break a woman's spirit. And everybody starts clapping. And I'm looking to the left. And I'm looking to the right. So y'all do that. Y'all going to jail. You keep on doing that thing. I, I ain't say it out loud. I kept the thought to myself, though. I already got thrown down the stairs. <laughs> Where we at? That was, that was it, verse 19. Okay. Okay. Uh, Matthew, uh, Nehemiah 1 and 4. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way, brothers. And believe me, some of them stupid teachers are still out there on YouTube. Punch you in the face! I ain't got to call no names. Y'all know who they are. Go ahead. Nehemiah what verse? Uh, 1 and 4. Nehemiah 1 verse 4. And it came to pass... When I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. So the next thing, brothers and sisters, that you want to add to your curriculum is praying and fasting. Get into the habit of praying and fasting. When we have our, our, our monthly fast, that's not because we have nothing better to do. That's because we know there's issues, lusts, and sins in the body. And we want everybody to give, be on the same page with God. Ask for mercy. Ask for forgiveness. That's why at the end of every month we fast. It's not we have nothing better to do. No, we do. We want blessings and not cursings. So that's why we institute it. And we, say, we let y'all know it's voluntary. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's strictly voluntary. Uh, Tobit 12 and 8. In the Apocrypha, Tobit 12. These are solutions. Tobit 12 
verse 8. 12, 12 verse 8. So one solution is not meddling with it. Another solution is confessing to the Lord. Another solution is getting counsel. Another solution is prayer and fasting. Go ahead. Prayer is good with fasting and alms. And what? And alms. So add to that alms. A lot of us is just stingy as hell. We don't want to help our neighbors. The monies that y'all donate is not for any one man's pocket, but to help the body when they have need. That's what it's for. Read it again. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. And righteousness. That's Deuteronomy 6.25. That's keeping God's commandments. Go ahead. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. A little with righteousness is much better than a lot with unrighteousness. Was that it? It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. Was that it? For alms doth deliver from death. Y'all see that? And alms doth de alms falls under loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Why? Because the alms we give is meant to help the Bible. The bi body. The body. Go ahead. And shall purge away all sins. See that? And shall pur purge away all sins. Uh, Matthew 17, 21. <laughs> uh, you hear me like when they said, yeah, the brother, the brother who don't, you know what I mean, he's very stingy, he don't give nothing, but every month he go drop in the, he go drop two, three thousand in the bank. And yeah, you check his thing, he, like, he hardly give 20 or 30 bucks. So down the line, guess what? Then you find out the bank take your money. You understand? All these things can happen. That's why you have to be very mindful. Mosiah said giving. It's a gift because guess what? They that uh, uh, diminish your sin. You understand? That's the commitment. Right, exactly. Matthew 17, 21. Matthew, Matthew 17, verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Christ is addressing demons. Some of us in here got demons in the disguise. Now, I'm, let me tell you something. There's spirits on different levels. I'm going to give an example. Remember the, 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 the history of uh, the swine? Where was a man who had a legion. No, what's that? I'm not, make sure I'm mixing the story up. Where they say, he said, cast the spirits into the swine. Remember that? Remember that? Those are low-level spirits that we all got. Th that's different than you got the satanic angels of heaven the spirits that you read about that was possessing people, those are low-level spirits, which is greed, lust, all those type of things, which we all got. That's why they got, that's, Christ is addressing one here. Read that again. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Some demons only come out of brothers and sisters by prayer and fasting. Get yourself in a habit. That's why Christ used to fast a lot. He ate a lot, but he fasted more. Get in the habit of that. As Negroes and Latinos, we don't like that. What? Go without food? I don't understand. No! Well, st stay with your demon then. Keep it. It's yours. Have fun. You know, you got to get in the habit of training, exercising that spirit. Okay? And you got to realize, use the Sabbath for your... The Sabbath is... Remember he said the Sabbath was made... How does it go? Man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. When you take, when the Sabbath, I'm going to give you an example. You eat less. That's number one on the Sabbath. Um, what else do you do on the Sabbath? You're not um, under the same stress or, or huh? Kids, say it on the, on the mic, son. On the Sabbath, you shouldn't be preoccupied with work business it's the lord's day your exactly. whole mind is supposed to be into this this is what you're supposed to be doing exactly and that day you that's when the time if you don't like to diet that is the day where you eat fruits and vegetables if you can do it you don't need cold i mean cold chicken give your body or the the sabbath give god i'm give, give give your body a rest give it a break because your everything is supposed to be done in moderation some of us make uh Wedding cake. Wedding cake plates of food. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The three tiers. And do not give your body a rest. Give yourself a rest. Give your mind a rest from the daily problems out there, the issues. Deal with the most high. All of that is meant to rejuvenate, to help you. 
mentally, spiritually, and physically. Yeah, but remember, the brothers who do that, they don't care about others as well. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, the same thing he didn't know uh, uh, before the Sabbath camp, he's still doing it when he come in the Sabbath. Exactly. Uh, last scripture, Sirach 17, 25. Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. You know why it says offend less? Because some of you are afraid to go cold turkey or to abstain. From, I can't go a day without porn. Yes, you can, brother. I can't go a day without crack. Yes, you can. Even a, the devil white man, what does he wean you off that cocaine and give you that, that damn methadone, which I don't prescribe to, but make you worse. But they, try, they have a weaning off. They understand, try to go less with something. Some of you think you're so bound with your sin that you can't go a day without porn. Just try going a week without it. If you can give yourself, a, I give an example. When we do the monthly fast, when we fast, we don't, I say this to the brother, did you look at porn? Nope. Was you doing anything contrary to God's laws? Nope. I said, so the most I'm saying, showing you, you got the power to overcome. If you could do it that once a month, you have the power within you to overcome. You can abstain from it fast from it. You can do that. You can do it. You just got to see it. You men understand what I'm saying? Proverbs, last scripture, Proverbs 28, 13. So the Bible said, offend less. Offend less. That goes back to mortifying your members, which is upon the earth. Deadening that spirit in you. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So if you hide your sins from God, I don't want to. I don't want to admit it to him because I'm too ashamed. It says, "He that covereth his sins shall what? Shall not prosper. You shall not be blessed. You shall not be blessed." Go ahead. But whoso, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh, confess them, your sins and give up your sin. Forsake your sin. Go ahead. Shall have mercy. You shall have mercy. That's where the mercy comes in, and that's what we all want. We all want that.